What's up, Heat fans? Ernest here, back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Happy Wednesday, you guys. It's hump day. We in the middle of the week, so let's get through this together. Now, I would really appreciate if you guys can like and subscribe to the channel. We on the road to 4,000 subscribers. Heat fans, I know we're feeling good. Last night, the Miami Heat got the dub against the Atlanta Hawks, 117 to 111 in double overtime. One hell of a thriller. Uh, the Miami Heat get the dub. Your uh, your your record is 44-35. You still got the eighth seed, but you're scratching close. You're getting close. A um, few notes about yesterday, you guys. Uh, first and foremost, big props to Nikola Jovic. Uh, I mentioned it in the short last night, but I got to give him his flowers. Um, 40 minutes, 8 for 12 for the field, 5 for 8 from the three-point line. He gives you 23 points, 8 rebounds. I remember there was a point at the beginning of the season where I was telling you guys that I was, excuse me, I was very committed on Nikola Jovic. I was saying in the beginning of the season that I felt that Nikola Jovic is the true starting power forward for this roster. I was mocked, I was ridiculed, but here we are. Nikola Jovic is doing business and he's showing that he can be that power forward next to Bam Adebayo. I love Bam and Nico together. You know, these are two power forward and centers, big players that can run up the court with the ball in their hands. They can control the offense on their own. They both have played point guard in their respectable pasts. So I love them out there together. Bam Adebayo gives you 10.7 rebounds. Trash. I'm sorry. Bam only attempts eight field goals? No. We need those up, Papa. I understand that Bam Adebayo is our defensive anchor. He also gave you seven rebounds and seven assists, three steals, a block. He was effing around with a triple-double. Um, so I think it's a solid game by Bam. You just need to shoot the ball more. But I don't think he could have shot the ball more because there was a lot of shooting going on from Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero was 13 from 25 in the field. He gives you 33 points. Tyler Hero, I know we were complaining about the injuries a lot, but one thing I will say, he's back at the right time. It's almost playoff time. Tyler Hero's legs are fresh. Hopefully he doesn't get injured again, um, but we need that going into the playoffs. Jimmy Butler, 25 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, 3 steals. Um, he does everything he can to help you win. He plays like your leader, even though that last play in the fourth quarter was garbage. Jimmy Butler has the ball with 16 seconds left. He calls for the pick from Caleb Martin. <coughs> doesn't go right. Doesn't go right, so he just throws it to Tyler and chucks up a terrible three at the end. That was a bad play. Um, I need Jimmy Butler to be more aggressive. I don't know if it's the age. I don't know if it's all the years that are catching up with him. I don't know if he's saving himself for the playoffs. Uh, but this is not up or shut up time for Jimmy Butler. I know there's rumors and inclinations about a possible contract extension that Jimmy Butler is looking for. I will say that only playing 57 games in the season... And in half of those games, not going your all, not giving it your all, causes concern to give a guy like that $50 million a year because you need a guy to be present and to help you win during the season. We are seeing the effects of load management and taking it easy during the season, what it does for the Miami Heat. Had we just won four or five of those BS games that we lost during the season. The Miami Heat would be a top three seed. This is why you take the regular season serious. I understand that we're a playoff team. But the last two seasons, this is the crap that we've dealt with, ladies and gentlemen. Load management and injuries. It's bit us in the ass hard. What I'm, I, all I'm trying to say is the Miami Heat in the offseason need to look at retooling this team for this season. Now, if Tyler Hero plays a lot more games, maybe this is different. You can't do anything about injuries, you guys. I know there's other Heat platforms that are complaining about injuries, arguing about injuries. It is what it is. You can only control what you can control. Because here we are now. You know, last week we're talking about that the Miami Heat are finally getting fully healthy at the right time. But now Duncan Robinson is out again with that back injury with no timetable for return. That's a hit big knock. Terry Rozier has developed his own injury. I don't think it's anything serious, but a neck injury is not something to play around with. So now you got 
both of your starting shooting guards and point guard not playing. And we got three games left in the season. So in the playoffs, you guys, it is about who's the most talented team, but it's also about who's the most healthiest. So we need to get this right and we need to get this together moving forward. Um, now the Miami Heat have three games left. You got a game tonight against the Dallas Mavericks. It's going to be a it's going to be a tough one. The second night of a back to back. Normally Jimmy Butler doesn't play those, but I'm going to need Jimmy to step up tonight because what you're fighting for right now is supremacy. The Heat are the Heat are about a half an, uh, a game and a half down from the sixth seed, so it's still a possibility, but the chances are unlikely. Indiana Pacers have two more games left. Those games are winnable. Philadelphia 76ers have three games left. Those games are winnable. So what the Miami Heat really need to hope for right now is for either of these teams to start losing. The sixth seed is kind of out of reach. So what you want right now is to get the seventh seed. When you go in the first play-in game, you need to win that game, unlike you did with Atlanta last year. You win that game, you get the seventh seed, and then you're going to get your pick of the litter. Whether it's Milwaukee with Giannis Antetokounmpo's recent injury. Whether it's New York with Julius Randle being out for the season. Whether it's Orlando who does not have much playoff experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Or maybe it's Cleveland. Um, Cleveland's been losing some games so I don't think that's likely. But that's the thing about the East. It's like I showed you guys yesterday in the shorts. The standings are so close. It's so tough to compare who's going to make it right now. And we are in the last final stretch of the season. So what the Heat need to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, is just hold on. The last two games of the season are against Toronto. Toronto's not looking to win those games. They're trying to get their draft pick. So right now, this game against Dallas tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say it again, is a must win. I said it in my video yesterday, the Heat have to win these last four games just to give themselves a shot at the sixth seed possibly. I don't think it's doable, but it's not out of reach. So the Heat just need to win some games. Now I wanna do something a little bit different, guys, because we've been talking about the season, we've been talking about the playoffs, we've been talking about possibilities and what we can do during the season, but the one thing that we've not talked about is what can the Miami Heat do to upgrade after the season? Now obviously there's free agency July 1st, we're going to wait and we're going to speculate on one guess, what's going to happen there. But before the, before the free agency, there's a special little thing called the NBA draft. The NBA draft is where the Miami Heat have an opportunity to boost this roster and to help us even further next year. What is, what is the one thing that we're lacking? Size. We don't know what's going to happen with Kevin Love. We have Kevin Love under contract next season, but it is a, team, a player option, I believe. So he can opt out. When I look at the draft, right now the Miami Heat with the 8th seed are slated for the 15th pick. Very similar to what they had last year, and they hit a home run with Jaime Hawkins. Even though Jaime's not been doing good lately, you know, he's, the, uh, he's there. Um, he's, you know, he's really broken out this year. He showed that with the Miami Heat's developmental system, he can be something for the future. I know right now times look bleak with Jaime Hawkins. It's just rookie struggles in my opinion. But... There's few names that have been thrown out for Miami Heat. You got guys like Jared McCain. Uh, you got guys like Taylor Salmon. Uh, you got guys like Tyler Smith from McKnight. But there's one name, one name that I look at and I think he'll be perfect for this Miami Heat team. And I think you guys know where I'm going with this. Zach Eady from Purdue. Zach Eady is seven foot four, 300 pounds, He's unlike any player we've had since probably Shaquille O'Neal. He's a dominant down low player. He averages 25 points a game, 12 rebounds, 2.2 blocks. That's everything that the Miami Heat needs. We're not the best rebounding team. We don't really have a rim protector that can block shots. Bam is the best thing we have, and he averages under a block a game. He gives you scoring down low, which is something we need. We chuck a lot of threes. So I think Zach Eady is a perfect complement for this Miami Heat roster for the draft. You even had Nick Wright yesterday on his sports show talk about Zach Eady being a great fit for the Miami Heat. Now, I will say this. Every year that we do this about possible draft picks, about possible off-season additions, 
everybody that we think that the Miami Heat is going to get, they don't get. They end up getting somebody that we've never heard of because that's how the Miami Heat developmental system works. They think of things that people don't think of. They think outside the box. They get players that they know are going to help them now. But I will say this. I think this is the very first time in the offseason where the fans and reporters like myself are looking at this team, putting two and two together and thinking, Zach Eady is going to be your best bet. Now, Zach Eady is slated to be picked around the 20th, 25th pick, low first round pick. So the Miami Heat can definitely get him if he falls to us. The question, ladies and gentlemen, if Zach Eady is available with what he does, do you feel that he would be a perfect option for the Miami Heat? I really want to hear what you guys have to say about that. Please let me know in the comments. And as for last night's game to finish it up, you know, you had a big game from Jovic, from Butler, from Tyler Hero. Bam had a solid game. You get 13 points from Haywood Highsmith last night off the bench. Um, but after that, you know, nothing really big. Seven from DeLon Wright, three from Kevin Love, three from Jaime Jaquez Jr. You get zero points from Caleb Martin, who started last night at 27 minutes, goes 0 for 9 for the field. This is just unacceptable. The, this Atlanta Hawks team is a low-level play-in team. Miami Heat need to turn it up and ramp it up. Um, I will say this, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I know the Miami Heat in a seven game series can compete with the best in the NBA. We just need to be fully healthy. We need Duncan Robinson, we need Terry Rozier. I understand that we have Tyler Hero, Jimmy and Bam. But with just those three guys going into the playoffs, as you saw last night, it may not be enough. Any team that you fight in the first round, even with injury, I still feel we can beat. You just heard what I explained earlier with all the teams this year. There's one team in the East that's a true, true contender, I guess you can say, or a true opponent for the Miami Heat, and that's the Boston Celtics, you guys. Boston have won 62 games. We know what Boston has done all season long. But in the playoffs, Miami has Boston's number. I would not prefer for the Heat to play Boston in the first round. I've said this many times. You guys know how I feel about this. I want Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the way to get Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals is getting seeds seven or six or two and three. That's it. Two and three is a reach. It's gone. But you can get the six seed. Maybe. Very unlikely. But what you need to look at is the seventh seed. Win that first play-in game. And then you'll get your pick from the litter. Any team in the East, Milwaukee, New York, Cleveland, Indiana, Philly, I don't care, Orlando even, I feel confident against those six teams in the first round. Boston, I don't want them in the first round. Yeah, if Miami get Boston in the first round and embarrass them in the first round and beat them like we've done to teams before, that would be a beautiful story. But I don't want that. I want Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's just the way I feel. So Heat fans, let me hear from you. Do you still think there's a chance for the Miami Heat to get out of the play-in? Or do you feel like me right now? Get the seventh seed. That's what you need to lock in. Let me know in the comments what you think. Fans, you guys know what we do here in Miami Heat Talk. We're a little bit different here. I like to be interactive. I like to talk with you guys in the comments. I like to have debates. It's fun as hell. So please, if you got something to talk about, throw it down in the comments. Because you know your boy's going to respond. Thank you so much for everyone that supports the channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We on the road to 4,000 subscribers, and I need you guys' help to get there. Thank you to everyone. God bless. Enjoy your Wednesday. And that's enough said. Stay positive, Heat fans.